Hello, my soccer universe. The time has come to induct another player in my Hall of Fame, and actually, it's the player that I potentially should have started um, this series. I then just decided he was not my immediate first idol. But Paolo Maldini to me is the very definition of an idol. It's the dream come true for a fan of a club. Uh, and if this club is one of your favorite clubs, as I said, I have two favorite clubs that are almost equal status, Lusk, hometown team, Milan for, you know, kind of international favorite team. He played in his entire career at Milan. That always counts. This always puts you, already puts you in idle status, but that you are one of the best players of all time, even in late age. and you actually retired at a time when you didn't actually seem like you're the weak link of the team. It's just a dream as a fan. Yes, we'll talk about it. Not all perfect with regarding with the fans, but when it comes to if to a Milan supporter, Maldini is has almost a godlike status unless you're an ultra. I had a hard time choosing which jersey uh, to wear for this one. I have a lot of Milan jerseys. I admit, I think I roughly half of them are from the time that actually Maldini played. And in the end, I decided on his last ever home jersey, the one that actually has his likeness on it. It represents not only, I'm very honored to have this jersey. Don't get me, uh, for, for, first of all, this is one of my most prized possessions that I have this one, uh, that I ordered it on time at the Milan store, blah, blah, blah. But it's also kind of a representation of Maldini, the man himself. So here you go. And it's a very nice looking Milan jersey overall. Black color, maybe? Better. Uh, I probably can talk an hour about Maldini. So, um, Let's just riff off. I mean, uh, the one thing that kind of defines Maldini is that Maldini is not the first Maldini who got great, who was who was a great name for Milan. His father captained Milan to the 63 European Cup title, the first one for an Italian team, beating in the final uh, Befica 2-1. Um, he also was named, kind of surprisingly, in the 62 World Cup uh, 11, despite Italy being eliminated uh, at the group stage, you know, the, the Chile game, the Battle of Santiago and so on. So the Maldini name already carried a lot of weight around Milan. And young Paolo, as we will hear, actually he favored for a short time Juventus. You know, you can't start off uh, at first, but um, he was appointed to the Milan Academy and at the tender age of 16 he makes he was actually in the youth squad he due to an in, uh, to an injury to Battistini at age 16 he makes his debut against Udinese in 1985 as a 16 year old and he did not play any more games but for the following season he was already a full squad member and it was then under Arrigo Sacchi, in, uh, when Arrigo Sacchi came, I think it was 87 or something like that, that he was not transferred from his right position to the left position. He is a natural right foot, however there was Tassotti, a very established uh, right winger, and Maldini was great on with both legs. And the one thing about, that, uh, about Maldini as a defender, he never looked like a defender. He was great on the ball. He had a certain elegance to him. This is something I will always love in uh, soccer players. I am less for the, um, the powerful or the quick and small player. I'm more like for an elegant looking player. And I'm thinking Zidane and Pirlo are two uh, prime examples of an elegant player to me. Probably also, I uh, should say, Xavi and Iniesta also very ele elegant players. But the, uh, when I think about Zidane and Pirlo, the, uh, there was kind of this, this oozes from them, the cool, calm. Maldini was of the same type. He had great tactical awareness. I mean, he worked under some of the greatest coaches. I mean, uh, Saki revolutionized soccer in Italy. He 
scared uh, they had a uh, the, his teams had a lot of tactical acumen especially his defense i mean it's famous that he said i let my defenders the four defenders and the goalkeepers play against a full squad um with the only rule if the ball is in the out uh the defenders get it and Gulli the Rackers from Boston, whoever was led, they never could score in the forge for defenders. And what's even more amazing to me is that Maldini was not only part of one of the greatest defensive lines in history, he was part of two, arguably three of the best defensive lines in history. The first one, of course, is Tosotti, Costa Curto, Paresi and Maldini. This is one of the best defenses you will ever see and a day revolutionized soccer by playing on the line with Paresi still being a libero, um, moving forward and backward at will, offside trap, um, all the good stuff, together with positional awareness and having and rarely actually needing to tackle, uh, especially Paresi, who we will surely talk in a video about, uh, but also Maldini, although they were strong and athletic, especially Maldini, they rarely relied on tackling as as a key component of the game it was all positional awareness tactical awareness and then also the vision to open up the field with attacks this is what to me made maldini great and if you watch even his uh, you know their youtube compilations of maldini tackles if you watch him tackle the way he does it he rarely makes a foul he goes for the ball and reclaims it and then immediately starts the attack again. He was a super precise attacker, but his value was not necessary in tackling. We all know about the Saki years. Milan became a sensation and young Maldini was a key component of that squad at roughly 20 years of age. He even made his Italy debut and played in at Euro 88 for Italy already. He was a key component of the 1990 Italy squad, which some might argue at least should have reached the final, if not win the whole tournament, who had the best uh, defense in FIFA uh, World Cup his history, which is the second line. I mean, what? Uh, who, who was there? Baresi, Bergomi, Maldini, and I think there was an, another. Uh, there was another Inter defender that I'm missing now. I mean, uh, absolutely great, great backline, Ferry. Very was the last one with Zenga in goal. I mean, talk of impenetrable. I actually think for Italy, it would got them better in '94 uh, when really more or less the Milan backline was playing with just Ben Benarivo on the right, uh, supplementing it uh, after, especially to, uh, I think Ben Benarivo outplayed the Sotti, the Sotti moved in the center then. Uh, and there were injury problems to Baresi, but basically the Milan backline could have played the entire tour, tour tournament, and this was the backline in the mid early 90s. In this backline, Maldini was by far the youngest player. Um, I mean, Costa Curta was just a little bit uh, older than him, but Tassotti and Baresi were kind of the old uh, players. During this time where this backline played, they won three European Cups, they lost two more finals, so the European Cup champ, champ, Champions League, uh, they lost two Champions League finals, won one Champions League, um, they won Serie A, I think, five times, if I'm not totally mistaken, um, 88, uh, 92, 3, 4, and then 96 again, yeah, five times. During that period, um, the one in 1999, 92, of course, unbeaten and 50 unbeaten games in a row, which I still think is an amazing record if you consider the status of Serie A at that time. Uh, I know a lot of Premier League uh, fans talk about the invincibles of Arsenal, but to be honest, um, what Milan did back then in Serie A, the strongest league in the world, to go over a year undefeated is simply unbelievable. To me, this is one of the strongest team performances ever. Um, and they were scoring at free will. It was only when then the Dutch period came to an end, then the whole, uh, it became a lot more defensive and Milan frequently had the best defensive record in the league with Maldini, of course, a prime 
position. I think one of his finest games in that period was actually the 94 uh, European Cup final where there was no Baresi, I think there was no Costa Curta. So with a makeshift defense, Maldini had to go into the, into the center and whoever were they facing? Stoichkov Romario, uh, the deadliest striking partnership uh, of the time. They did not see a ball. They were completely outclassed. So uh, that was, I think, the finest moment. And at that time, um, people started to recognize Maldini and, you know, he or not only was a great defender, he l he also looked the part. I mean, I think he was voted well sexiest player at the World World Cup, and you know, uh, I remember Maldini. And you know, the first time I was aware of Maldini, I'm you know becoming a Milan fan. I made this nice graph with the first lineup and all that, the kind of club logo when they have won titles and and, and so on, all hand printed. I wish I still had it because it actually looked quite nice. Um, and I knew of Maldini and I remember Maldini uh, playing for Italy and you know he kind of had short hair and let's see if I have a short haired Maldini picture because this is something you don't see that often these days I think he is one um, but that's in his early times I think this is still um, teenage Maldini um, I remember, so he had this kind of short, 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 short hair. That, you know, it's all these eyes. The eyes was fascinating, for fascinating me. And then add to it the long. When I saw him, then I think the first time that I realized was nine ninety two and nine nine ninety three. When I saw him in soccer magazines with this long flowing hair. I mean, he looked. He was the epitome, of, epitome of cool to me in many regards. I mean, I like my rockers. I don't know if me if Maldini is a rocker, fellow rocker like me, but uh, look at this, this is one of my fav favorite pictures. That jersey, that look, I mean, this is Maldini in his prime in a way. Uh, although this was the beginning of a season that did not go that well for Maldini, 96, 9, 97 season. The only problem with Maldini at that was that um, for Italy, he did not have the luck and uh, this also carries through his career that um, he when he retired uh, Italy he was the most capped player for Italy he hadn't won a thing he was three times eliminated on penalties in the World Cup one semi-final 90 uh, in the final 94 and in the um, quarterfinals in 98 um, in 1990 they should have made it made it to final the other two World Cups they played a great final with Baresi, that's, but that's a Bar Bar Baresi story in 1994, but I think Brazil was the overall better team. And I don't know about this 98 encounter with the host nation France. There is a feeling that if Italy would have gotten over the time, but you know, with Croatia, I, I, I don't know. Italy was not the greatest team at that World Cup, but they started, started strong and he was coached by his father then, which also, um, he was the captain coached by his father and everyone would say yeah this is nepotism no Maldini was that good it was never even questions there was no way but yeah with Italy I think the one tournament he should have won was Euro 2000 where he formed the next great backline and if you think about it, there was a three at the back Nesta in the center Cannavaro on the right and Maldini on the left these are three of the greatest defenders of all time in one team. It was a very offen offensive Euros. Um, so I always thought that Italy would have not, not, not there been the right team to win, but to be honest, in the final, Italy were the better team. They were just only a smidgen away that Maldini finally lifts a trophy for his home country, something he would totally have deserved. This is, I think as a fan, this is the one thing that I regret that he retired and after the 2002 World Cup, um, I think at the age of 31, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah, at the age of 31, it felt too early. He could well have made the 2006 squad, he could well have lifted that World Cup trophy, but then Cannavaro played an amazing tournament, so I don't want to take this away from him, but it I truly feel that 
Martini's career in that sense is unfinished, unfortunately. But with the retirement from the national team, and at the time, you know, 96 to 2002, Milan were going through a rough period. Yes, they won one championship in 99. Um, but Milan was not a great Milan. But then Angelotti came and Milan got built into a force again. Slightly different one. Not as dominant as before. And Italy still Juve uh, dominated. But when it counted, Milan was there. And we l talk about the next great backline. Cafu, Costa Curta, then... Stam probably was also in there. Um, Stam, Nesta, one of those two, mostly Nesta and Maldini. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. It was mostly uh, Cafu, you know, Maldini, Nesta, Costa Curta, Cafu, and, and then Cafu, Stam. And it's an absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous backline. Um, and Milan was the dominant force for about five seasons in Europe. Um, not necessarily in Serie A, but he captained Milan to a Champions League triumph in 2003, where I have to say that Milan started really strong and I didn't believe they could sustain it through this entire um, tour tournament, but they timed, timed it well and I have to say in the final they were a better team than Juve. He won and 40 years to the day he lifts as a captain the European Cup, Cup Cup trophy after his father did so in London. He did it in Manchester because at that time Wembley was being rebuilt. So I mean that's a nice speaking of this is this looks a complete finish. 2003-2004 Milan wins the championship by a mile and probably should have won the Champions League too if there wasn't this crazy night in La Coruña. I, Milan, to me, was the best team in Europe that season. Bar none, they bottled that. And they bottled it next year again, where they were not the strongest team, but they made it two to the final and were well on the way of winning that one, with Maldini scoring the fastest goal in UEFA Champions League final history, also the oldest goal scorer ever, and I was so happy for him in the first minute, 51 seconds in. <sighs> I wish those 10 minutes from hell never happened, and we would... Uh, my Milan fandom would feel much more more complete. I'd rather wish they have lost the 2007 final than the 2005 final. But revenge he got. In 2006, Milan reached the semi-finals. Yes, they were outclassed by um, Barcelona. However, Barcelona only won by a scoreline of 1-0 on a way goal, though. So I uh, was never all that out. And then in 2007, kind of you know, on the back of the Caltropoli scandal, but Milan in the knockout stage it became the best team in Europe suddenly again with uh, you know you have Gattuso you have Pirlo you have a great back line you have a team clicking of old guys on all all cylinders and Maldini lifts a second time as a captain the trophy and something that I think that title made me the happiest of all the titles I know 1994 and 2003 felt great but that 2007, it just fit perfectly. And yeah, he then plays two more seasons. He wins one more. He was He's the first captain to lift the FIFA Club World Cup trophy, the official one. So that, that was nice. But then mm, stayed, I think, uh, when they got eliminated in 2008, this was his last Champions League. He played one, one more season. He helped Milan get back into the Champions League. But to be honest, I would have wished that he would have retired after winning the Champions League. Uh, I think it would have been a more fitting um, end to his career. Um, speaking of end, I think on his last tour, and we'll talk, he got um, applauded everywhere. He had played his last home game in this jersey. Everyone gives standing ovation except the Ultras, who really offended him, you know, uh, he had his tussle with ultras, because with Maldini, what can you say, Maldini, he always spoke his mind, he always defended the club, and this always caused some friction with the old ultras, so on the last day, he basically, uh, they said you were the greatest player ever, but uh, basically we don't like you, and then uh, 
they say, yeah, he is to the one, to the only, the great captain, Franco Baresi. And that on the final day, yeah, sums up also Maldini in a way, the club man. Um, after his career, I think he long avoided being with Milan and now he's in kind of a tussle as I'm recording this. He is kind of in the sporting director, but not, you know, so, 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 so. Um, maybe he will step down soonish. Um, he, for the longest time, did not want to go back to Milan. Uh, but then he got involved in the project. I think he should be involved. His sons, of course, one made the squad, so the generations go on. But I think the most um, brilliant thing is that a few year, years ago, uh, he qualified for a doubles tournament, ATP doubles tournament in Milan. I think at an at the age of 45 or something, something, something like that. Absolutely crazy. And of course he picked, uh, he and his son picked up COVID, but of course survived it. I actually want to end this video with a long, to kind of sum up Maldini again, with an excerpt from Cooper's book, and this will probably be the next book that I'll, I'll be talking about, and I will not read it then, Soccer Man, where he kind of, he collects, um, articles he wrote about soccer players and there is one on Pauli Maldini it's uh, two and a half pages and I want to read that to you I will not read it then I will pick some other players but it sums up Maldini the character and everything perfectly and I think it's a perfect way of ending this this was written in May 2005 just before the fateful night in Istanbul and then there's a little past word on a dark snowy day in 1985, a scared 16-year-old made his debut for AC Milan. Where do you want to play? Milan's coach Niels, Hild Niels Liedholm asked him. Amazed at being consulted, the kid said he preferred to write. He was right-footed at the time. He came on, didn't make many mistakes, despite having sore feet from tight shoes and has hardly missed a game since. In the Champions League final against Liverpool next Wednesday, a month before his 37th birthday, Paolo Maldini will probably win his fifth European Cup with Milan. Yeah, it was two years later. Maldini is brilliant, handsome and nice. Nobody dislikes him, except the ultras. Even Tommaso Pellizzari, a fan of Inter Milan who wrote a book against AC Milan called No Milan Admits, in 20 years of soccer he never did something you remember as bad or ugly. Since many of us hope to achieve eternal perfection, the question is how Maldini does it. It began with his father, Cesare Maldini, had captained Milan himself and his son seems to have constructed his life around seeking the old man's approval. From the moment I first remembered seeing a picture of him holding the European Cup, says Maldini, I wanted to copy his success. Cesare from Trieste had the grinta, grit, that typifies players of that region. And so Paolo, who had more natural gifts than his father, developed grinta. When Milan moved him to left back in his teens, Maldini achieved through grinta and practiced something almost unfeasible for anyone older than 12. He made his left foot as good as his right. He still surprises me every day with his quest to always improve and to look inside as well, says his father. Alberto Zaccaroni, who coached Milan at, uh, Maldini at Milan, recalls, he plays the friendly game of the Thursday afternoon against a youth team or an amateur side as if it were the Champions League final. In a Champions League semi-final against Eindhoven earlier this month, Maldini threw his head in front of a Dutch striker, winding up for a shot. He was kicked in the face and stretched off. Within a minute or so, he had resumed work. To maintain this level of grinta, you have to believe in the institution for which you work. Hardly any players love the clubs. They leave that to fans. Yet Maldini actually seems to, even though he supported Juventus as a boy. No doubt, this love is connected to love of father. At 73, Cesare still scouts for Milan. Paolo regularly turned down better offers from clubs like Manchester United and Chelsea. Chelsea, and once when Milan pleaded financial trouble, accepted a pay cut of 30%. He talks often about the importance of playing in his city of birth and admits it distresses him that Milan signed so many foreigners. Maldini has subordinated ego to club. To make him a walking reproach uh, to players who seek status through anything but performance. Wayne Rooney, who often seeks much of confrontation, got a pat on the head from Maldini. Robbie Savage, a Welsh player who before a Wales-Italy match threw away a Maldini shirt on television, was not granted a response at all. Maldini seldom speaks, but when he does it keeps his teammates in line. Yet none of this quite covers him. There's something supernatural about his body, as if he were a Greek god, poorly disguised as a human. 
To remain a great player at age 36, as hardly anyone in history has, you must always have taken perfect care of yourself. Milan's training ground, Milanello, offers glimmers of an explanation. The sunny ideal on a hill above Lake Como comes alive a few minutes before 10 each morning, when a parade of SUVs carrying multi-millionaire players pushes past the armed guards. Maldini has made his, this commute for 20 years. Between training sessions he sleeps in his Milan Milanello bedroom. He says it's almost as though all your worries stop at the gates. This is the ideal manner to get the best out of you. It would appear so for me Maldini is not alone at Milan. The back four likely to face Liverpool have an average age of 33. 39 year old Billy Costa Curta in reserve. This is because the Milan Lab, the club's medical team, has discovered the secret of eternal youth. The lab is always testing players' muscles, brains, hearts, breathing, psyches, and so on, and then analyzing the data with computers. Well, they're kind of not doing the job anymore, I have to say. Whereas other teams still run labs together, each player at Milanello follows his own customized regime. It works particularly if you're a Greek god to start with. Adriano Galliani, Milan's vice president, reports Paul's biological age is much lower than his actual age. The tests we have done now are better than three or four years ago. As to say, it's partly a matter of how old you feel. Maldini believes that stress consumes energy. He tries to avoid it by not thinking about soccer outside of work, uh, work hours. He never reads the Gazzetta dello Sport, it Italy's um, daily pink pie Bible, never appears on television or in gossip rags, and never talks about soccer with his wife and sons and seldom even he with his dad. Almost a decade ago, he stopped appearing as a disc jockey on radio. David End, an official at the Dutch club Ajax, cites Maldini to young players as the example of how to manage their lives. When End told Maldini this, Maldini replied that he felt honored. Not only that, he actually looked honored. This is another trick of the mind required to remain great. Despite knowing you're great, you have to feel humble. Every time one talks about this, few manage it. If Maldini ever retires, the Milan lab will probably clone him. And then the afterword. In February 2009, when the 40 year old Maldini played his last derby against Inter before retiring, the Inter fans held up a banner that said, For 20 years, our opponent, but in life, always loyal. On the other hand, at his last ever game, a few months later, hardcore fans of his own club held up a banner that said, On the field, you were a never ending champion, but you lacked respect for those who made you rich. He had only played 24 years for Milan. If he did lack respect for certain people, you could sort of understand why. I think this is all I want to say about uh, Maldini, and there's so much more I could say about him. But with that, Paolo Maldini, I induct you to my Soccer Hall of Fame in the category Icons. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.